ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Set Open video, we're going to be further discussing AMD's Mantle, which of course is an API specifically written for the GCN architecture Radeon graphics cards. So this technology was actually pretty damn exciting for a lot of developers. The basic premise is that you can code to metal. In other words, that you can code pretty damn low level on PCs. But one of the reasons that it was actually extremely exciting for a lot of developers was because that in theory, in theory anyway, it would make the porting process between uh, PC inside the PlayStation 4 or the PC and the Xbox One or even Xbox One to PS4 uh, a lot easier. But, of course, both systems have their own, I'm talking about the Xbox One and the PS4, both systems have their own shader languages. The Xbox One, of course, uses DX11 and the PlayStation 4 uses PSSL, also known to its good buddies as PlayStation Shader Language. Um, sorry guys, I'm having one of those days where I just can't seem to speak properly. I think it's just tiredness. Anyway, um, so anyway, where was I going? Ah, yes. So the PS4 and the Xbox One have their own shader languages, but there was apparently a lot of rumors that the Xbox One and the Mantle API had a lot of similarities. And one theory actually was going around is that Mantle was actually built and based on the X1's uh, API. In other words, it was a, an even lower level version. But now we've got some information regarding this. So, first of all, AMD themselves have said, and I quote, Mantle is not meant for hardware level based console uh, development. Meanwhile, Microsoft have decided to throw a spanner in the works and then bash people on the head with it afterwards. Uh, this is a quote from one of their blogs, and that would be on the window, Microsoft Windows app builder blog. And they've basically been saying, you know, DX power. In fact, their header is, and I quote, raising the bar with DX uh, 3D. Anyway, I'm going to get into the quote now because I'm that kind of a chap. Uh, for 15 years, for over 15 years, Direct3D has served as an essential ingredient to deliver cutting-edge 3D graphics in games. During this time, Direct3D has dramatically evolved as a result in deep investments we've made in development across our device platforms, in other words, Windows, Xbox, and phone, and continued partnerships with the industry-leading GPU. GPU hardware vendors and game developers. We are very much excited with the launch of the Xbox One. We can now bring the latest generation of Direct 3D 11 to consoles. The Xbox One graphics API is the Direct 3D 11.x, and the, yes, they do have point .x, and the Xbox One hardware provides a superset of Direct 3D 11.2 functionality. Other graphics APIs, such as OpenGL, AMD's Mantle, are not available on the Xbox One. Meanwhile, AMD responded, and then they said that it is specifically and primarily and only a PC platform. Uh, the quote was, and I, of course, quote, uh, PC game. You can tell this isn't coming to me naturally. Sorry, guys. I'm slogging through it today. I have no idea what the hell's up with me. Uh, PC gamers and developers deserve the benefit of this model as well, which is why devs like DICE approached us and requested technologies like Mantle. And the benefit of this technology is clear, improved graphics for game, improved performance, I'm sorry, for gamers, through more efficient rendering. So much of the work game developers are doing to prepare for next generation of console gaming is already well suited to modern graphics architectures in the AMD Radeon graphics and through the door is an opening for non-PC platforms to support Mantle in the future. Um, today Mantle is a continuum that allows developers to take advantage of the work um, on the PC. So. I think what actually started a lot of this out of quote um, was actually a comment by AMD themselves. And this is the problem with comments and, uh, you know, little side notes and so on. It can be really easy to misinterpret them or maybe not understand all of it or maybe it gets slightly, you know, basically translation gets lost. 
And anyway, the quote was pretty much with mental games like DICE's Battlefield 4 will be empowered with the ability to speak the naked language of graphics core next architectures, uh, presenting a deep level of hardware optimization no other graphics card manufacturer can match. And Mantle can also assist games developers in bringing uh, games onto multiple platforms by leveraging by leveraging the commonalities between GCN powered PCs and consoles for a simplified game development process. And of course, AMD, uh, out of quote, of course, AMD also pushed things such as the idea of uh, all the optimization work that you could utilize on the consoles would be very easy to transfer over and so on and so forth. So there you have it. Basically, Mantle is an open platform, yeah? It's completely open. Developers can do whatever the hell they want with it, including NVIDIA. So NVIDIA actually could utilize Mantle if they so wish. They would have to basically uh, figure out how to utilize it specifically for their hardware, although both GPUs do have some similarities. Of course, they also have a lot of uh, differences as well. A Microsoft's own blog post they were pushing things such as the inclusion of tiled resources, which I've spoken about tons and tons and tons, but basically allow you to create a selection of virtual textures, which can pretty much be updated as you're closing in on a certain piece of terrain and so on. They have uh, great uh, excellent integration with Visual Studio for analyzing and debugging, improved performance when accessing memory between the GPU and CPU, which is pretty damn important, of course, for the Xbox One, but also a lot of PCs now are starting to go the APU route, especially if AMD have their way. Programming model improvements, including advances in HLSL, or hardware level shader language, that enables developers to write more manageable shader code and reduce a runtime cycle spent on shader compilation and improved performance and efficiency on mobile form factors by reducing representation overhead and enabling hardware acceleration delays and scalers this enables better game performance and high resolution displays and improves rendering latency basically uh, this one the latter one is for obviously cell phones and so on it's to create an upscaler so let's say the game renders natively in a low resolution air or the device isn't really capable of running in a high resolution it pretty much just upscales it and reduces the latency while it's doing so but of course there has always been the fairly high level of overhead um basically to do with the draw calls with DirectX and for PCs well, it's not really going away. Uh, higher level, or higher performance, should I say, CPUs are starting to mitigate it. But ultimately, there's a reason that games developers do kind of want an application like Mantle. It's, think of it this way. It's pretty much pissing away performance. It literally is like you're hamstringing the uh, PC because you're not getting the most out of it. I was doing some research today, actually, not a great deal, I'll confess, but I was just a bit curious on what type of GPUs and so on can run Battlefield 4 and um, at what resolutions and frame rates and that type of thing. As it turns out, a fairly high-end GPU will run Battlefield 4 with a pretty damn good amount of AA. Uh, I think it was four times MSAA, which is multi-sampling anti-aliasing. Um, That'll be at 1080p, natively, of course, uh, maximum everything. So, obviously, that's technically higher settings than the consoles, and that'll run at between 50 to 60 frames per second on a, you know, pretty damn high-end GPU. It's not exactly... We're not talking Titan levels here. We're talking, like, mid to high-end. Um, obviously, if you decide you're happy to reduce AA a little bit, you know, to say two times, then you'll be able to get away with it a bit better. Um... And obviously a lot of this depends on the amount of RAM you've got on the GPU and many other factors. However, DICE have stated that, and by the way, Mantle performance benchmarks aren't exactly available yet. So in other words, you can't just look on the internet and say, oh, okay, this is Mantle versus, um, you know, DX11 or whatever. But they are stating it's quite a performance increase using Mantle for the PC. I 
I don't want to hazard a guess exactly what because they've you know they've they've given figures which are stating you know ridiculously improved uh, draw uh, draw call performance draw calls by the way I forgot to mention I've mentioned it on the other Mantle video but just in case you missed it um, draw calls are basically that the CPU tells the CPU uh, tells the GPU in other words the processor tells the graphics card okay, well, you need to render this. And obviously, draw calls are needed for multiple objects on a screen. So it's not like it just says, well, you need to draw this, and that's it. Because let's say there's multiple characters on the screen. Let's say there's um, I don't know, buildings and whatever else. All of those different objects need to be rendered and created and assembled. And, you know, that takes a hell of a lot of processing power. Um, just because of the rather thick layer. You can consider it kind of like you have to go through a lot of middlemen. Um, just think of it rather than me telling... Uh, the best way to think of it, and this isn't exactly a technical explanation, but let's say that you want to go to... I don't know, let's say you're in City A and you want to go to City B. Let's assume that I know the directions and you don't, rather than me telling you uh, directly on a phone conversation because let's say you don't have a hands free kit and your you know cell phone's broken and the same for me in this weird ass world and let's assume that you know you need to make take a tight uh, uh, t uh, set of turnings so you need to follow these directions really precisely well what happens is that um, in reality, of course, if, if you could both, if we could be both just holding the phone, I could just tell you the instructions. So I could say, okay, turn left. Okay, you need to make another left in, you know, 20, uh, in the next, I don't know, quarter of a mile, to take a right or whatever, you get the idea. On the other hand, think of it as with Direct X, you've got a lot of middlemen. So you could consider it that I'm giving my, the instructions to my friend Bob, and he's speaking to... Uh, your friend Tim over the phone and so therefore you're getting me telling Bob that you need to make a left and then uh, Bob is telling Tim that you need to make a left and then Tim is telling you you need to make a left and you can imagine just how many times something's going to screw up because one of us accidentally says the wrong you know direction or one of us says it a little bit late or you know there's a miscommunication or whatever and obviously it's not exactly like that with draw calls I am uh, oversimplifying things a hell of a lot, but you just get the idea. And the problem with that is that because it's such a thick level, this is this hasn't been done arbitrarily, my I add. It's not like they just were like, yeah, you know what we're going to do here? We're just going to make this really, really obscure and convoluted just for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Oh, by the way, I can actually speak properly now. How will a bloody lulia? Anyway, um... Yeah, it's not like just did that for the hell of it. It was just because there's a lot of different pieces of hardware. I mean, the developers of a game, and to be fair, Microsoft, they don't know what GPU, what CPU, what RAM you've got, and, you know, so on and so on. And so the purpose of Mantle is it's basically keyed to GCN architectures. And so the best they can, that they know that there's a, there's a certain set of instructions that Mantle can handle, or... Uh, has been written for that they definitely know that Mantle uh, targeting platform and other the GCN architecture can handle. So what's my thoughts on this? I'm interested to see what Sony have to say. Um, I have no real idea yet on exactly how well it's going to go down. My theory is that Sony are probably not going to be supporting Mantle either. The problem is right now Information is just not out uh, to really give us an understanding on how easy a transition is. I mean, as far as I am understanding, I'm doing a lot of research on this behind the scenes. I know I haven't actually done a couple of videos regarding DX. I was actually supposed to do videos already on the second part of the PlayStation Shader language and DirectX, but I've been doing some research uh, behind the scenes, if you will. And... With Mantle, we're just not exactly sure how a lot of this stuff is going to all fit together. In other words, what the common grounds, what the similarities, where the deficit's going to be, and so on. Um, obviously, from the PC's perspective, even if you're a PC-only developer, let's say that you're not giving a rat's ass about console sales, you don't feel that it's going to work on a console, or let's say you're a small indie developer, and all you care about is 
cons or PCs, whatever. Let's just, you know, make up a set of rules because it's easier sometimes to discuss if we live in a silly world for a moment. Um, let's assume that's the case. Let's say that, you know, id, uh, id software decide to only target um, PC for the next release. And by the way, id, of course, John Carmack prefers OpenGL because they believe it handles stuff better, but that's a different topic. Um... The problem is, which render do you go for? You you can't really just say, well, all we're going to go with is Mantle, because NVIDIA are actually the biggest uh, sellers of GPUs. They've got the largest market shares. And even if the latest NVIDIA cards could work with Mantle, let's, let's say that NVIDIA just says, you know what, we're going we're gonna to just work with this thing, get it working. But the problem is, any GCN any non-GCN cards, for example, the Radeon 6000 series simply would not work. And therefore, of course, you still need DirectX of some description. And that's where it becomes a bit messy because this is pretty much exactly the same issues that uh, 3DFX and games developers were finding themselves in back in the day uh, with uh, 3DFXs, which of course made they made the Voodoo chipsets for the PC, and they had their own API known as Glide, and there was a lot of difficulty there. So it's still going to be an interesting uh, proposition. Exactly what happens over the next couple of months and years, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the benchmark results of Mantle for um, Battlefield and other titles as well. I think that if it's a significant performance improvement, then people may well take some notice. But the the issue is, it's just like, you know, how easy is it going to be to write for multiple APIs? Because the problem you've got with all of this, of course, is quite simple. You've only got a limited amount of teams, you know, only a limited amount of people in a team, only a limited amount of time to create and complete a project. How long can you actually put into basically optimizing multiple render paths? It's not an easy decision. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit longer than I anticipated, actually, but regardless, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.